All right, into my strength workout. And I'm just gonna get into my shoulder a bit today because I've uh, done a minor tear in a couple of the muscles in there the other day. You can go and see me do it if you go and watch the video, the day 12 strength workout in the second set of the pike push-ups. Um, it's not that bad, but it's enough that I need to, well, you know, if you're going to get muscle tears, you need to deal with them. So, uh, But I can feel it at the back of the rotator cuff. I think I might have torn a couple of the rotator cuff muscles, maybe, from what it feels like today. So, you know, how do you deal with a muscle tear? What do you do, like, you know, if you, if you don't really know what you're doing and you want to be able to just keep going? If you have a major reduction in range of motion, like if it really hurts to go into certain ranges, then going to see a good sports physio is always a good idea. But lucky for me, I know more about shoulders than most people, so I can confidently change my own programming without having to go and see a physio for it. And I don't have a reduction in range. I've just got a little bit of pain, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, maybe three out of 10 or something like that. So I've changed my program. I've removed the pike push-ups or the calisthenics movement from it. And I'm doing shoulder press now and a whole bunch of shoulder strengthening work. And I'm considering, I'll see how I feel next week, but I'm considering doing a deload week next week as well. Because I've done three pretty solid weeks of training now. I haven't done that much volume in a while. So I might deload next week on the fourth week to a full deload week. But... I might also try and get through next week and then maybe do a deload in the fifth week, we'll see. Oh, it's quite tender back here. So I'm just getting my, oh, there's a spot. With this massage ball, I'm just working around the back of the shoulder where the rotator cuff is and trying to just find any, any really tight spots where I can get a, a trigger point release and when you find a spot like I have here, I just put as much weight on it as I can and hold it for about 10 seconds, which is usually enough to get a release, like where you, where you feel that the pain starts, starts to subside. Ooh. Oh, all right. And now I'll... Um, the warm-up, because I'm doing weightlifting today, when you do weightlifting, the warm-up itself, at least what I'm going to do today, is quite different to um, what you normally see me do because, you know, you, you warm up by doing the weights. So you warm up by doing lighter weight than what you're actually going to lift. So I don't need to warm up the same way. And I already did some foam rolling this morning. I did my flow and mobility workout. Yeah. So. I love this, um, this band. As soon as, I, so as soon as I pull there, I can feel it in my right shoulder. It really activates the rotator cuff when you do this movement, so it engages or trains the rotator cuff, which is a really good warm-up for me post-shoulder injuries because it just really gets that, it sends that signal through the nervous system to the rotator cuff that it's time to start working now, get ready for some strength training. It's coming. And then I'll do a little bit of this body blade as well. This is good for the rotator cuff. 
just creating instability. Rotator cuff work, a lot of it, like there's so many different ways to train the rotator cuff and I love the external rotation pattern. The external rotation pattern trains all the, the external rotators of the rotator cuff. So the, um, the teres minor, the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus. Um, and the subscapularis is pretty active in pressing movements. He can do internal rotation work, but it's pretty active when you do most um, pressing movements, like a horizontal push, chest press, or anything like that. Um, but the rotator cuff is also trained really well with instability work. I'm so much worse on my left side. I really need to do more work on my left side. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to be pretty bloody tired today. We've got a puppy uh, two nights ago. We've had it for two nights now. And if anybody's had a puppy before, it's like having a baby. They, they just don't sleep for the first few nights. You've got to train them on how to get into... The, <laughs> a night routine, like night time is time to wind down. I know somebody asked me the other day to show me the puppy. I will, but it's upstairs right now. And, and also compounding with that my son's on school holidays and we only have one child, so he doesn't have siblings to play with. Um, God, it's demanding. <laughs> school holidays. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to do a pronated grip press today. I haven't done these in years. And that's the main reason I'm doing them because I haven't done them in years. Doing something that you haven't done in a very long time is a really good way to have an adaptation. And I'm doing, a, I'm doing shoulder pressing twice in a week. So um, doing a, a neutral grip one day and a pronated grip another way is a good idea. So I'm doing a, uh, a four, three, two, one warm up. Four reps on about 50% of what I intend to lift. And three reps on about 70%, two reps on about 90%, <clears throat> and then one rep at 100%. But you also make adjustments as you warm up based on how it feels. So we'll see. And what I'm doing, you know, I'm doing, I'm really trying to work out an imbalance here. Besides the fact that I've got a small, a small tear in one or some of the muscles in my shoulder right now. I'm, you know, trying to work out an imbalance from left side to right side where I can feel that my left side isn't as strong as my right side. I was favoring my right side when I did the injury. <laughs> okay. I think I should be okay with that weight for the first set. Let's see. And I'm gonna pair the shoulder press with ring rows. I'm only gonna do pull-ups once a week in this program because oh, my son's got all these rocks where my feet have to go because I'm 
you know, really working on some structural balance here. And I'm also, there's a lot of considerations here for me at the moment because I'm overcoming this golfer's elbow and that golfer's elbow wasn't getting better fast enough. I have to deload the, uh, the wrist flexor tendons. And so pull-ups are, you know, really challenging, obviously, on that. So that's why I'm doing these. And I'm doing a ring row because the ring row is really transferable to a pull-up because it's still a closed kinetic chain movement. And I'm still training push and pull, even though I'm doing a vertical push and a horizontal pull. I don't mind doing that for, you know, once or twice a week for a program phase or two for the reasons that I'm doing it. Because I'm still training the lats, I'm still training the biceps, the posterior deltoid, I'm still using all the pulling muscles, just in a different plane. But it really deloads the forearm, the wrist flexors, and it feels so much better. Like, it feels probably 80% better in one week, just from taking this approach. So, which is how, you know, most injuries respond to the right approach. You do the right thing, they get better real quick. That's a good weight for me to start with. I might go up later on in the workout, but I think that's a good place to start. <sighs> okay, get my timer on. So this is, you know, having a good exercise vocabulary or, you know, for those of you that don't know, have the exercise vocabulary I do. That's why the UMS app is so good because with the drop down menu you have all these alternate exercises and having a good exercise vocabulary is really, it's a pivotal part of overcoming injuries because you go, okay, well that exercise is causing me pain or it caused this injury. What can I do that's still going to train the muscles the way I want them to be trained, but not make my injury worse, and in fact, help it to get better. And yeah, you know, I, I wanna get a handstand push-up, and I was working on pike push-ups, getting ready to progress to wall-assisted deficit eccentrics, and then my shoulder says no, so I don't need to stop. I can just go, okay, let's change uh, the way I'm doing things a bit. Let's take care of this shoulder. Let's work out the imbalance that's presented that I can see and then move forward. And I was going to, um, I was gonna not do any flexibility training today between my sets because I did heaps of flexibility this morning. And I'm doing some um, <clears throat> some butterfly work coming up after my primary workout. Some work for the middle splits. So I'm just warming up 
I'm just really doing this to warm up for the butterfly stretch. And these are, you know, we use this um, hip opener in the UMS warm-ups uh, for the lower body that's really effective. But something that you can do to really help with your flexibility work is when you push, you also tense your glute on that side to help you pull deeper into the stretch. And it creates a, obviously like a, an end range contraction whilst you're pushing. So you're contracting the glutes to get deeper into the stretch. It's really effective. Oh, it's another warm day in uh, my office for training. I much prefer training outside. I just hate bringing this bench out and all the dumbbells. See, it's interesting, I can really feel the left side is weaker, even though the right side is the injured side. I can really feel how my left side is getting its butt kicked towards the end, but the right side isn't. wasn't going to do any flexibility between sets, but the truth is my hip flexors are just so tight compared to the rest of my body. And I can use the volume. And so what I'm doing at the moment, I'm doing much more intense flexibility work for my hip flexors three times a week in my flow and handstand workout. That's that diagonal stretch that I'm doing. And so this is, woo, still intense, but you know, I can do it while I'm resting my upper body. It's not that hard. I just did my fourth set of shoulder press and I stayed on 17 and a half kilos. So that's, um, I think it's, I don't know, about 40 pounds or something like that in each hand, which is light for me. But I think it's really important to start your first session of a new program when you've done a minor injury, because this is very minor what I've done, but it is an injury, on a much lighter weight than what you're used to lifting. Because it's not that big a deal to go through one workout where you lift only 70 or 80 percent of what you could have. But it's a really big deal if you go through a workout where you make an injury worse because you were lifting with your ego and you didn't want to re regress. So that was really good. That was a good starting point. And I think I'll probably go up to 20 kilos or 44 pounds in my next workout. Thank <sighs> you. 
So it might, uh, might actually be, well, partly the super spinatus that I've injured because that was quite challenging. And um, that's, that's uh, often an indication of a super spinatus tear. So this is recovery for my shoulders, you know, my shoulders are recovering here. But even if I just sit here, I'm getting a bit of a loaded stretch for my adductors, for my groin, helping towards my middle splits. But if I can uh, contract my glutes now and get some contractions in there, then I'm really doing something good for my flexibility. And I was doing some loaded lifts and pull downs for a while, which is where I lift the weights up, I lift my knees together, and then I pull down, they're really good. But because I'm really trying, I'm not trying, I'm prioritizing my muscle growth and strength development, and flexibility is the just the icing on the cake for me at the moment. I'm really more in a maintenance phase rather than a flexibility development phase. You know, doing those loaded lifts and pull downs, it was just a lot of energy between strength training um, sessions, sessions between strength training sets that I didn't want to be expending. I wanted that energy ready for my next set. Oh, come at me breeze, come on. There's a nice breeze coming in that window. Okay, here we go. And I don't go all the way down here because you deload the deltoids if you go lower than that. I'm really looking forward to getting a bit of normality in my routine back again. I don't do well without a routine. I'm one of those people that is very uh, routine driven. You know, I guess a part of, well, not a guess, a big part of me making these videos is just to share with you guys my process, like how I, how I still keep moving forward even when life throws obstacles in my way and I can't do things the way that I tend to, which happens to me all the time. There's always things that come up. There's always things my wife needs or my son needs or, you know, or we decide to get a new puppy and all of a sudden I can't bloody sleep properly because it's yapping all night.
Nice one. Three sets done. And these are, these alternating sets work really well if you do do it the way I'm doing it, where you, you just don't think about it. You finish one set and you just go straight into the next set. And then, and then once you get the weights on your leg or whatever it is you're doing, then you take that moment to go, oh, all right. And then you start thinking about whatever you want to think about. Think about your next set, about your next exercises. About whether you, you've done the dishes at home or whatever you want to think about. There's, um, it's a big thing that I reflected on last year. Last year, I spent a lot of wasted time in my workouts. because so it was a really hard transition for me to go from Unity Gym to doing the online business and get my workouts done. Because when we used to train at the gym, I had classes before and after training sessions. There was a very clear cut time of when we all trained and we trained together, you know, Yanni, Richard and me, Phil, Will, everybody that worked there. We all used to get up and train together. And, you know, so that was fun, it was social. You, you were you, looking at the clock, you knew when your training session finished. All of a sudden I didn't have that. And I'd waste so much time in my workouts just thinking, thinking about random stuff, thinking about whatever I had to get done at work or getting lost in the rabbit hole of social media or whatever. And so a big, a big um, commitment that I made to myself for this year is that I would stop doing that. That with my workouts, I would just have my workout and I'd just keep my UMS app open and the only thing I'd look at is my app and record, next set, bang, bang, bang. So, yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm on to some chest flies now and bent over lateral raise. So I'm doing antagonistic movements here. Again, just for shoulder health, shoulder strength, structural balance. So unilateral movements, I'm using dumbbells, not barbells. And I use this D roller so I get full range of motion with my scapula, which helps to build flexibility as well. And I actually did 10 kilos last time with those chest flies and they felt okay. So I thought I'd do 11 because I was doing six kilos with the lateral raises here. That just means I don't have to take the wrist weights off between every set. I really try to be strict with those movements. So like avoid the, oh, you know, where you're throwing your body around. And, you know, I'm not gonna argue the validity of that because I know there's, there's plenty of people out there in the world that are way more muscular than I am that do train like that. But I prefer to really isolate the movement and get and really be, because you know, any movement like that is because the muscle isn't strong enough to move the weight on its own. So you have to, you know, it's basically a kip. And I'd rather 
choose a weight where I can isolate the movement to the muscles that I want without having to kip and throw my body into it. see I was definitely struggling at the end of that set. That's another exercise that I really feel on my left arm, but not so much on my right. My right is much stronger. So I'm doing this for middle splits, for an end range contraction of the glutes. And I'm working against gravity to hold my legs open here, which is hard. But now I work with gravity as a superset, which is easier. Of course, this is the one that everybody made fun of me of for my thumbnail a week or so ago, which I get. Of course, it looks weird, but I don't care. You can track your glutes hard. And I've just got my hands here to assist pulling my legs down. 
Oh, man. All right. I'm up to my rotator cuff work now. Almost finished this workout. And this is even more important. Oh, now with what's going on in my shoulder, buddy hell. Too sweaty. I can't get my arm to stick to my knee like it should. Oh, that feels really heavy today. Very heavy. news is this workout's not taking too long, not including the warm-up. My app says I've been training for an hour and six minutes. So yeah. Okay. These are really hard when I'm tired. Oh, almost got six. exercise the finger extension the antagonistic movement to grip crushing this is a big part of training I think people neglect not this exercise specifically but the idea of opposing movements in the body always a push and a pull dripping with sweat it's so humid in here and then finishing off with wrist flexion and extension for my golfer's elbow which is almost completely gone now I am very excited I feel like I'm going to be able to probably move on from this at the end of this program phase Golfer's elbow is an inflammation of the tendons of the wrist flexors that connect to the medial epicondyle. So it's the muscles that do this. So you've got to make them stronger. All right. 
and then we always do antagonistic movements so these are just to balance out uh, the strength in the wrist. Okay. 